I can't tell you how excited I am that you're here because by showing up, you're already being strategic and clearly you have a growth mindset and you're wanting to take the right steps to land your next interview strategically. Now, being strategic actually means being perceptive, being future orientated, being open minded, being proactive and making and taking decisions based on information and calculated instincts. So in keeping with being strategic, I'd like to just remind you of two points. Firstly, if you're currently working with a career coach or an HR advisor or recruiter or possibly another career strategist, please make sure that you check my advice with theirs. I want you to be strategic and take what feels right from me today. I definitely don't want you to shift gears entirely from one thinker to another because that could be detrimental for you in the long run. I want you to be able to extrapolate what's right, take what you need, and then use that within your unique process and strategy. Obviously, unless you're my client, this is really good, solid advice. What we're going to cover today is mindset and action steps to prepare you and strategically land your next interview. But it's not the only advice. So be aware of how best to apply it. Secondly, there are industry-specific needs in an interview process, in the medical and the pharmaceutical fee fields, um, in highly technical environments, and management consulting. In management consulting interviews, there are very specific ways to interview and share information and very specific needs from those processes. So obviously, if any of those industries apply to you, you would be aware of that. And yes, you're welcome to be here, but be strategic and extrapolate what is right for you from today's session. Yay, I can see lots of comments starting to come in, new and tried. Thank you. That's fantastic, everybody. Right. So what are we going to cover? We're going to cover how to get your mindset right before the day. I'm also going to take you through what action steps you should take on the day. We're going to cover strategic prep to cover any interview format, no matter what the interviewer decides to throw at you. We're also going to talk about the three strategic questions that you can ask to identify if the role is right for you. And lastly, I'll also share how best to follow up after the interview. Now, I've got one more ask of you. Switch off all your distractions and be all here with me. Be present and 100% focused. Invest this time in yourself and allow yourself to absorb everything. Take notes so that you're able to look back and apply what's relevant and what you've learned. There's absolutely no time like the present. And perhaps what you'd like to do is work with an accountability partner. I highly recommend that. Somebody who might be interviewing or going through the interview process as well, so that you can prep and do some research and share your examples with each other. Okay, now we're ready to get in and we're going to start. How to get your mindset right before the day. There are three points that I'm going to share with you. Attitude to approach the interview, accept and qualify your nerves, and acknowledge that the interview is an exchange of information. So firstly, attitude to approach the interview. I don't subscribe or believe in the advice of selling yourself in an interview. I don't think that is the right energy that I would want to prepare you with. I would rather suggest that you adopt the posturing and the attitude of buying your next role. Now think about the energy between a seller and a buyer. They both have a need. They both need information. They're both looking for answers, but they come from a very different locus of control. And control is something that allows you to feel confident. So approach the attitude. The attitude that you're going to have when you approach this interview is with the attitude of being the buyer of your next career. Now, confidence comes from clarity. And the best way to have the attitude of buying your next career versus selling your skills is to de develop that confidence. And there are two ways that you're going to develop that confidence. The first is researching the heck about the role, the company, the people, the culture, and everything about it. And the second is researching yourself. 
Now, when I say research, I'm not necessarily sharing that you're going to take all of this information to the interview. Remember, this is how to get your mindset right before the day. Your mindset is you're approaching the interview with the attitude of a buyer, and that confidence of being a buyer comes from your research. So in the instance of researching the company, you're going to Google them, look at them on great platforms like Indeed and Glassdoor. Look at the people that work at this organization and LinkedIn. What you might even want to do is send out some connection requests to some people who are in similar roles or were in previous positions that you'd be interviewing for or who are actually in the team. People that are on a peer level, possibly even below peer level, reach out to them and say to them, I have an interview coming up. I wonder if I could chat to you a little bit about what the organization is like. That type of research of the people and the culture is essential, and it's something that you definitely need to take on board. Yes, your interviewer, the line manager, and the process is going to share that information with you, but your attitude of buying is you're going to do your independent research as well. In terms of, so you're researching the company online, you're going to research the people primarily through LinkedIn, reach out with them, and in terms of the job description, you are seriously going to unpick it. I want you to highlight all of the emotive words when they're calling for certain qualities, leadership, multitasking, um, think on their feet, whatever the terminology is, you're going to highlight that. Clearly, you're going to separate that emotional soft skills from the necessities and the requirements, and you're really going to be able to go through the job description so that you have a solid understanding of what it is. Look, when we get into an interview, the job description that we've been presented often has slightly changed during the interview process or that job description came out of an HR file and it's kind of, you know, 70% of the role, but it might not be the whole role. So you're going to do the best that you can with the information they give you. But as we go through the strategic preparation, you'll learn from me how you're going to do some more research about whether the role is actually right for you on interview. Second part of the confidence that equips you with the clarity to be the buyer of your next role is yourself. Research in yourself. Why this organization? Why this role? Why you? I mean, start with why from Simon Sinek is a great TEDx talk and book to familiarize yourself with in any career strategy process. But I really want you to have some self-acknowledgement and reflection and honest conversations within yourself in terms of why this role. Now, it doesn't have to be because this is the best and dream career and absolutely everything. It might just be this role because you need a job, this is a good opportunity, or this is better than the toxic environment and the stuck role that you're in. That's absolutely fine. I'm not saying that you've got to have some lofty big why you're going to the interview and, and the opportunity, but you need to know it for yourself. You need to know it for yourself and be 100% clear on why this role, why this company, and why you for them. So point number one in terms of approaching the interview with the right attitude, buyer of your career, comes from being confident, researching the organization, the people, and the job description, and researching yourself. This research is not necessarily what you're going to share with them in the interview, and you'll see why as we continue. Point number two accept and qualify your nerves. Remember, you are human. We are all human. Everybody gets nervous. You wouldn't be human if you weren't nervous. In fact, I'm incredibly nervous standing here in front of you today, and I don't know a single soul who doesn't get nervous. So it's not about pretending not to be nervous. You're not going to be interviewed for how confident you are, but humanizing the process of the interview environment comes from qualifying your nerves. And there's a wonderful sentence that I'd love to share with you, and it's a great icebreaker to use at the beginning of the interview. So the interview's just started, whether it's online or whether it's in person, you've greeted everyone, they've introduced themselves, and you might say something along the lines of, thanks for your time, I'm excited to be here. In fact, I find myself a bit nervous because this is where you're going to qualify your nerves and you're going to say something strategic because this role really interests me, because I've always followed your company and I'm excited that the right opportunity has arisen for me within it. 
So you're going to humanize the process from the get start of the interview. Tell them that you're nervous, but qualify your nerves. Now, two things are going to happen from that. Immediately, your interviewers are going to be relaxed because you've been able to express some heightened emotional intelligence in terms of managing your nerves and talking, articulating about them. Secondly, they're going to say something to the effect of, oh, please don't be nervous. I'm actually quite nervous when I looked at your CV or no, don't be nervous. We're just here to chat and have a conversation with you. They're going to take your lead and they're going to follow along with humanizing the discussion. Think of it. Think of how an interview is actually so um, set up to fail by default. Two people talking, sharing information. Both people are nervous. They're trying to get to an answer. They want to know if you're right. You want to know if you're going to get it. And, and the whole thing is actually quite unnormal and, and unhuman. So by starting off the interviewing interview process, by accepting your nerves and qualifying your nerves, you're really shifting it into a humanizing process. And that is an important key element from a mindset perspective. Third and final, how to get your minds right before the day, is acknowledge that the interview is an exchange of information and it's conversational. It's a two-way conversation. This is very similar to the humanizing the process, but what an interview is not is an exam where you have to answer your questions robotically as quickly as possible. What an interview is not is a test of how much research you've done on the company. What an interview is not is a speed test. So throw those debunked, um, you know, old fashioned thoughts out and know in your mind that the interviewer wants to hire you. The interviewer doesn't want to spend hours and hours and hours going through loads of CVs and interviewing lots of different people. They would far rather wrap it all up in one process and move through the stages of the interview. So know that they want to hire you and they actually are your supporter. This knowledge will help relax you. And when you know that, you know, it's not an exam, you're going to take notes with you throughout the process here in this strategy session, but I want you to take those notes into the interview. If it's an online interview, then you can have your notes next to you on the table, but I want you to refer to them. And if it's an in-person interview, you'll just take them in a you know, beautiful folder. And I want you to say to the interviewer, after you've humanized the process and qualified your nerves, I want you to say to them, I've actually taken some notes. Um, I may refer to them during the process and I might make some notes. Is that all right? You're just gonna run that past them. An interview is not an exam. It's an exchange of information and it should be conversational. So those are the three points, how to get your mindset right before the day. Your attitude to approach is the attitude of a buyer with confidence around researching the company, the role, the people, and researching yourself. Why do you actually even want to interview for this company? Second is accept and qualify your nerves. The third is acknowledge that the interview is an exchange of information and take your notes with you into the interview. Okay, so some nice tribe and new words populating in the comments. Thank you, everyone. And by all means, leave some questions in. Hopefully, I'll be able to get to them at the end of this time. Let's move on to the next part of the strategy session, which is what action steps should you take on the day? Now, there's four action steps that four categories of action steps. The first is logistics. The second is mindset. The third is energy. And the fourth is appearance. Logistics, mindset, energy, and appearance. So what do I mean by logistics? Well, regardless of whether this is a online interview or whether you're actually going in person, you are going to cover and check all of the logistics. If the interview's at nine in the morning, you're gonna make sure that you've checked your Wi-Fi, that the setting is right, that there's no external noise. If there is external noise and you're interviewing from home, that's not really your problem, but do everything you possibly can to mitigate it. Make sure you have a set of headphones, make sure that you can shut the door, close the window, do everything, and obviously check that your Wi-Fi battery and everything is completely stable. If it's an in-person interview, you're going to check the route, you're going to check the roads, you're going to check Google Maps on the day, transport, you're going to see if you're taking transport, if you're driving yourself. Arrive, plan to arrive no more than 10 minutes before the actual interview starts. There's a very powerful process of sitting in the reception of a organization before you go into an interview. Obviously, that depends on whether you're actually interviewing on site within the organization. But in terms of logistics, you're just going to run through everything and make sure you've got that all covered because those kind of curveballs can throw you off. 
You want to make sure that your logistics are completely covered. And don't be afraid to ask for support. If you're not com comfortable with driving or driving stresses you out and it's going to be a time of traffic, perhaps invest in either an Uber. If you're taking public transport, then make sure that you plan for some mitigated delays within the transport. And if you do have the luxury of interviewing from home, then just make sure that you've controlled the environment. If you've got small children, ask a friend to come and look after them. If you have animals, keep them outside. So nothing small can throw you on the day. The logistics and the finer details are minor, but they can be so major on the day. So action steps you take on the day. Number one, obviously, is logistics, but go through them all. Number two, again, it's mindset, because mindset is so important with any interview. And what I mean by mindset on the day is the great, great quote from Tony Robbins, as I want to, was actually Tim Rohn, who was a mentor to Tony Robbins. And Tony Robbins shares, stand guardian at the gateposts of your mind. What does that actually mean? It means avoid anything negative on the day. Avoid the news. Avoid any negative thoughts. Do whatever you have to do to keep those negative thoughts at bay. You want to be completely focused, laser-eyed focused, with your attitude of buying your next role, with your strategic prep, and you want to be prepared from a mindset perspective for succeeding in the interview. Your mindset for going for this interview is not, ah, let's see what happens. I hope they like me. Your mindset is, I'm going to land this interview and I'm going to succeed. Now, whatever it takes for you to get prepared for that, whether it's, you know, some weird kind of um, ritual or kind of physical activity or music or whatever, then do it. Um, I'm going to use the analogy and the South Africans and rugby fans are from around the world are going to get me when I say that. Um, you know, when the um, rugby game, the, the guy goes to kick for goal. And he stands and, you know, the stadium has to keep quiet and they position the little rugby ball, uh, rugby ball. And he's, depending on who he is, he'll do something strange with his leg or with his hands or he'll look up at the goal and they'll be like around three or four minutes where the whole stadium stands watching in amazement and awe at what this particular rugby player does to make sure that they've got the right mindset to kick the ball through the posts. This is what I'm talking about. Do something strange. I mean, do whatever you have to do to make sure that your mindset is right. But primarily, it's stand guardian at the gatepost of your mind and don't let yourself be swayed by anything negative at all. Third action step that you're going to take on the day is you're going to nod and notice your energy. Similar to mindset, but different. And what I mean by energy is I want you to approach the interview in a high energy positive vibe state. Now, that will naturally happen because you're going to have some nerves, but it's kind of like getting the butterflies in your stomach to fly in unison, unison and work for you. So whatever it might be, pause before you actually go into the interview, whether it's in person, you're sitting in the um, your car before you go into the reception area, or whether it's at home before you actually click onto the call, or you might even be working for the company that you're going to go for an interview with, then take a bit of a break. Ha create a pattern interruption to allow yourself to get your energy where it is. Don't just go from one ho-hum Zoom call into the interview because that's going to come across. I want you to, tools that you could do is you could play some great music, listen to you know, a really high energy song, um, you could go for a walk before you have to get in to either the online or the physical interview, or you could even shake it out. Literally just stand and shake, 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 shake your body. That really just kind of zoots up your energy and it'll get you into that high vibe, positive energy mode. You know, the expression um, that our parents' generation um, kind of incorrectly have shared with us around, um, you know, don't get too excited. Um, you might be disappointed. You don't want to get yourself too excited because what if you fail? I don't agree with that at all. And that advice is not relevant when it comes to an interview. Get excited, but get strategically excited. 
allow your emotion to show, but allow your emotion to be strategic. Don't try and hide your nerves. Don't try and pretend that you're not excited. That kind of human emotion is necessary and it's important, but be strategic about it. And then the last point in what action steps you should take on the day is appearance. I would like you to clearly and obviously make sure that you are wearing your best clothes, that you feel comfortable, dress successfully, dress to succeed, but dress to impress, but don't overdress. Um, you might want to, you know, have, have a special piece of jewelry um, that you're able to wear. Um, make sure that you've got a little glass of water with you. If it's in person, they're going to offer you water. But take time to consider your appearance. Don't leave it till the last minute. It might seem obvious, but really kind of do an inventory check of the appearance and what you're planning on wearing the night before so that when it comes to the day, you can focus on your mindset and energy and the logistics in your appearance are kind of taken care of. So those are the four steps, action steps that you should take on the day. Moving swiftly along, let's get to strategic prep to cover any interview format. Now, I've already said that you're going to um, consider the type of interview that this might be, given the industry. This prep specifically comes from the perspective of we don't necessarily know what they're going to ask us they could be completely off the wall and start asking us about the type of books we're reading and our favorite Netflix show. Or they might be more traditional and stick to standard interview questions. We don't really know. And it's hard for us to anticipate what to expect. Three points here are going to help you strategically prep for any type of interview format that it might be. The first point is what I call pace. I want you to approach the interview and break it down in your mind. There's a beginning, there's a middle, and there is an end of an interview. Now, breaking it down in your mind is going to give you a sense of control. It's also going to give you the opportunity of knowing that you can kind of pause and slow things down. Because what naturally happens when we're excited and a little bit nervous is that we tend to speed up. So pacing yourself will remind you to pause and slow things down. And it also allows you the opportunity of just having that sense of there's three parts to it. And these are the three parts that you then break the interview into. So what do I mean by beginning, middle, and end? Well, the beginning would be the introduction, the hello, where you humanize the process, where you share that you've, ta you've taken notes, and where you kind of meet and greet and you, you ice break with them, with the tips that I shared earlier. The middle part would then be the actual crunchy part of the interview, which is the strategic prep we're going to cover in the next point. And then the end part is traditionally where they would say, do you have any questions for us? And that's what we're also going to get to, the three strategic questions to ask. So there's three key areas to an interview, and you're covered with each area. It just creates that sense of control. You might even want to imagine that you've got a remote control in your pocket. I know that might, might sound strange, but trust me, if it works for you, take it and absolutely have it. Next point about strategically prepping for the interview is connect the dots for them. How do you connect the dots for them? You're going to share relevant, specific, situational examples. Now, you don't, unless you know exactly what to expect, what type of interview questions they're going to ask, you might be thrown by something that they ask you. And in my experience of both a recruiter and a career strategist, the worst type of interview is the one where after the fact you think, oh, I should have told them that, or why didn't I answer that? And this part of the preparation where you match strategic situational examples to um, you prepare these strategic situational examples for the interview, will cover all your bases. So this is what it looks like. You're going to research the job description and you're going to unpack keywords. And when you look through those keywords, you're going to specifically look for situational examples that support you in matching those keywords. If that doesn't work because the job description is too generic or doesn't really have keywords, and let's face it, Writing job descriptions is completely an art and a science, and not all companies get it really nail that art and science. So another way to approach this is to list 10 reasons why you're a good fit for the role, 
And then for each of those 10 reasons, prepare your own three to five situational examples. So those 10 reasons could be experience, they could be technical, they could be soft skills, they could be a number of different things. But think carefully, only you will know why you're a good fit for the role. But then draw up actual situational experiences, uh, situational examples. Now, they're not necessarily going to say, tell us 10 reasons why you're good fit for the role, but they are going to ask you for a situational example. And if they don't ask you for a situational example, you will have these top of mind ready to share with them. This also completely covers you for that age old question, tell us about yourself. Tell us about yourself is an opportunity for you to interpret and connect the dots for them. Yes, you can say, you know, where you're married and what your hobbies are, but you really want to zone in on why you're a good fit for the role. So your strategic prep to cover any interview format is 10 reasons why you're a good fit for the role with a minimum of three situational examples for each to support them. And then the third and final point in strategic interview preparation is I would like you to remember to keep it conversational. What I mean by conversational, I've shared before how it's a two-way street, but be confident enough to check in with the interviewer. So when they ask you a question and it might be fairly detailed and you've shared a lot of information, they might be looking at you, they might be taking notes, they might be nodding. Ask them, say to them, was that what you were looking for? Did I give you what you needed? Is there more that you need from me? Use these conversational words to check back in with the interviewer. It's going to, one, show that you're in control, that you've got this high emotional intelligence and you're able to double check with them. Two, it quite strategically gives you the opportunity of saying, is that what you're looking for? In other words, have I given you the answer you need? And the interviewer is either going to nod politely or say no. Unlikely that they'd say no, but it will give them a chance of saying, actually, give me more information or can you explain that in a bit more detail? So keep it conversational by checking back in with the interview interviewer. So just to recap that, three strategic ways to cover any interview format. Number one, pace. Break the interview down in beginning, middle, and end, and you've got corresponding action steps for those three sections. Number two, connect the dots. Prepare relevant, specific, situational examples to support while, why you are a good fit for the role and let them know that. Tell them about that. And number three, keep it conversational. Something about the connecting the dots, too, that I remembered, I've just remembered, is the interviewer might not necessarily ask you for situational examples. Don't leave without sharing that with them. And in the point of keeping it conversational, you might say um, something along the lines of, does that answer your question? Great. Can I share a situational example with you? Can I share some more information about what I mean? So in the instance of keeping it conversational, they might not ask you specifically, but you can share that information with them. All right, moving swiftly along. We are on pace now and we've got to get through the content. Three questions to ask to know if the role is right for you. Now, you want to know if this role is right for you and you want to be strategic, but you can't actually just come out and ask that. So we're going to position that under these three strategic questions. And obviously, um, you know, it depends on what stage of the process you're at and how many interviews there are to come. But these three questions are best fit for a first round interview. And you can continue to ask these throughout the process. In fact, I would advise that not only do you ask this at the first round, but in every consecutive interview, but you also ask it of the different players in the interview. So in other words, you would ask this of HR and the recruiter. You'd ask this of the hiring manager, the line manager, and you might even ask it of a senior executive if it's relevant for them to be interviewing you. What are the three questions? Number one, I want you to position yourself with that buyer's mentality and you are going to say to them, who are you ideally looking for? Not what, but who? Now, the person who clearly understands the role, who knows exactly what they need, is going to be able to answer this question with ease. 
somebody potentially from HR or the recruiter who knows what the tech that knows the what of the role but doesn't know the who might battle with this. And this is where you're going to have to express some confidence in asking the question. Because when you say, who are you ideally looking for? They might kind of go, well, you've got the job description or we're looking for somebody who has X, Y, Z. This is where you're going to be confident to say to them, yes, thank you. I understand. I'm, I'm fully aware of the, dro the job description. I know what you're looking for. I want to know the personal qualities. Who are you looking for? And then pause, remain silent and see what they say. And if you're in an interview with more than one person, you're going to look at them all individually and say, who are you ideally looking for? So you're directing the question at all of them. And here's what's going to happen. The person who really knows the role and is able to actually answer it is going to tell you who they're ideally looking for. And the people who don't more than likely are going to remain silent. But you are going to know from the person who is closest to the role who they're looking for. They might say something along the lines of, we're looking for somebody who understands the job description that they can go beyond it. We're looking for somebody who's able to work within our industry but can double down and access other levels of information. I mean, they're going to share a huge amount of secret resource to you in answering this question correctly. Don't let them get away with telling you what they're looking for. You want to direct them to who are you ideally looking for? Second strategic question that I want you to ask is what challenges face this role? Now, this is going to tell you whether the challenges that face this role are something that you are prepared to take on or not. Irrespective of what the answers are, when they reply, I want you to smile and nod. So don't look in horror as they start to describe everything that you're not prepared to take on as a challenge. Keep the playing field open. And if they're describing something that you know is definitely not for you, smile and nod and make notes. And then you know as you walk away, mm, this isn't the right role. But what challenges face this role is a super strategic question for you to be able to find out what are the issues. And again, it's going to be dependent on who really understands the role and what quality of information you get back. So by default, you'll be able to really get into the minds of who knows the role best. Third and final question you're going to ask is, what does success look like in this role? And again, smile and nod with their response. Obviously, if they're describing something that is not you and you would never want to be doing in any role, still smile and nod and acknowledge. You know, when you talk to somebody and they smile and nod, it's body language of them telling you, I hear you, I understand you, that's no problem. Don't stare at them in horror when they answer these three interview strategic questions that you ask because that wouldn't be great. No matter what they say, smile and nod, you're either going to walk away from that interview going, Phew, no ways is this role for me, or absolutely, I know it. And that's all. Those are the only strategic questions that you need to ask. I know that there's loads of more questions that you'd want to ask, but at the first round, I don't believe any of the others are more relevant than this. Who are you ideally looking for? What challenges face this role? And what does success look like in this role? That's all you need to know. Try and be confident enough to just stick with those questions They'll be impressed with how high level they are, and they'll be impressed with how much depth you went into without asking how many days leave, where are the officers, how many people in the team. You don't really need to know any of that until you're able to identify if this role is right for you. And the answers of those three questions is going to give you if it's right or not. So that's that part. And moving on to the roundup, how to follow up after the interview. Now, again, this is highly situationally de dependent. Um, I've worked with some clients where the follow-up has been normal to be on email because the logistics of arranging the interview has all been through email and they've had email contact with them. Um, I've worked with some clients who've had the CEO reach out to them and message them on LinkedIn. So the follow-up then was through LinkedIn. I've even had some clients who received um, text messages, but then I advised them to take it through onto email. So you're going to take my advice here and you're going to apply it to what's relevant to your particular situation. A good rule of thumbs is obviously to email. 
However, please, if you're going to send an email, you obviously would make sure that you have your own professional email address, not candy925 at Hotmail or Yahoo. Nothing wrong with Hotmail or Yahoo, but a good Gmail, Google account in your name, name, dot, surname, is a good, solid, professional email address. So you're not going to be emailing them from something that would seem unprofessional or too personal. Secondly, on the email, I want you to create a signature and make sure that you add your LinkedIn URL. Yes, you would have customized your LinkedIn URL, and you would have made sure that your LinkedIn profile is optimized. Don't include your LinkedIn URL on your email signature if you don't have an optimized profile. What I mean by optimized is that you've filled out everything on your profile to get three stars from LinkedIn. You've made sure that you've got recommendations from other people for the good work that you do. And you've used the relevant keywords from the job description on your LinkedIn profile. So if you've done all of that, then definitely it's correct for you to send a follow-up after the interview, thanking them for their time. Here, in terms of it being situ situationally dependent, no harm can come from sending a, a succinct, polite thank you for the interview. No, no, no wrong, you're not going to be doing any, put it this way, you're not going to be doing anything wrong by sending a follow-up, but um, there are some do's and don'ts. So in terms of the, in the checking the emails, make sure that you have the right contact, who would you send the follow-up to? Definitely always the recruiter, the person who set up the interview. And if you're able to get the email um, addresses of the other people that you interviewed, obviously do that. I wouldn't necessarily advise that you're going to send a follow-up after every single interview. This is a good, solid, off-the-bat, first-round interview, and you send a follow-up. What you're going to say in the follow-up is a, a brief, succinct email, and you're basically going to be thanking them for the interview but I want you to draw out one of the points or connecting the dots with them from something that was raised in the interview that wasn't discussed previously or wasn't clear in the job description. So there'll be some little golden nugget that was shared within the interview, perhaps one of the questions to your th answers to your three strategic questions. And you might just want to repeat that in the thank you note. You're going to end off this email with, I look forward to next steps. Show that emotional intelligence, that confidence, and that buyer mentality of, yes, I know I'm going to be going forward to the next steps. Um, and make sure that on the email that you mark it with a read receipt so that you know when they've received it and they've read it. Those are the do's. What you don't want to do in the follow-up is you don't want to make it too long-winded. This is not a cover story. You're not going to repeat your interview. It's going to be a sh short, succinct paragraph. What you don't want to do is harass or in any way be um, sort of uh, emotionally needy at all. You're simply going to say, thanks for the interview and so forth. You're not going to try and coerce them into hiring you because for goodness, know, goodness knows that's not going to work. And what you're not going to do is send it more than once. You send one good, confident follow-up email with a read receipt and that is it. You don't keep sending it and asking them for a reply. It's simply a thank you note. What you can do quite strategically, and it would depend on the level of the role and what the information is, along the lines of I look forward to next steps, you could share something that prompts them to respond. But I'm not even going to go there with you because this is too broad um, a training to hone in on that. But just know that there are elements around that. Um, and it's something that I teach in my career strategy process. Okay, we have wrapped it all up. That's all the information that you need to strategically prep for your next interview and succeed. We covered how to get your mindset right before the day. We spoke about what are the action steps you need to take on the day. We also covered the strategic prep to cover any interview format. We shared the three strategic questions that you need to know if the role is right for you. And we also offered how to follow up after the interview. Please leave your questions in the comments. I'm going to be able to get to them and answer some help answer in the text and the comments. You'll see me answering the questions in the comments. I'd love to know from you what your biggest takeaway is. Share with me and let me know what worked and what not worked from this training. Remember, you're going to be completely strategic about it. And a final reminder, 
please don't forget to follow my company page, Lisi Doing Career Strategist, which you'll find in the comments. That's all for today. Thanks for attending and share with me on LinkedIn and let me know how this goes. Good luck with your next interview. Thank you and bye-bye.